All right, we have some of our pictures that we're going to take posted right in the beginning of the video this time, making sure there's an extra pressure on me to make sure I come up with the shots. We are at the corner of, what are we? DuPont and Christie. Wow, in Toronto, Canada. It's April 5th, 2021, and we're going for a little walk, look-see, checking out the stores, motorcycles. Cool. The weather is amazing today. Not too hot, not too cold. I'm actually wearing a t-shirt and a light jacket. All the smoke and that. Hey, man. Good work, man. Keep up the good work. Thanks, man. I'll try to shoot some alleyways. That guy would have been a great guy to shoot because uh, on the smokes, the thing is, when I'm holding a camera monitor and stuff like that, I gotta have this camera at operational at all times. We get recognized and praised on the street. Look at this artwork. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that interesting. That girl had opened the door with what would be I'm assuming that she just stepped out of a shower look. She just had a towel around her. And uh, yeah, she was answering the door like that. This is an interesting uh, signage here with this photo work come on okay i like that shot there's so many signs against these buildings and the street let me just check the camera settings we're on yes my eyes so i set this camera at about f5.6 today and shutter speed of about 250 and uh, yeah, I'll let the camera decide the ISO. I like really like this uh, couch business here. I don't know if the picture turns out, but he's got an amazing, comfortable couch. There's a Mustang at the end of that alleyway. Let's go check it out. <clears throat> this guy's got a really nice uh, couch. And uh, wow, this is a nice tree too. Nice couch on his porch very comfortable very comfortable I don't know maybe possibly just want to look at that uh, little blue Mustang oh and there's a uh, maybe it's a garage because there's a BMW and uh, stilts it's so much quieter here isn't it I like to use this uh, wide-angle mic for uh, the sound. That's a nice shot of a Mustang and a Beamer on. That's cool. A bit closer. Beautiful. Nice car. He's repairing the car, I guess in the backyard. These alleyways are really interesting in Toronto. Not many new places have them, but you have them where you have your house on one end with no driveway or no front yard. Then you have your backyard and then you have this little garage here and an alleyway that can access it. I guess they're not putting them in new areas anymore. I guess because it's extra cost of city clearing this back alleyway for few people and probably other reasons but they're kind of fun to play you know as a kid you can play in them too because you know there's not much traffic and you know they're usually across these busy streets that's uh loblaws across the street in the parking lot this is a cool color of a house too we not van coming in i need to take it with one shot there's a yellow zebra action happening by the door, so you know where the door is. Look at the colors. Crazy colors. What is this place? It's the Italian sandwiches. Okay. Okay. All right, I guess it's a sandwich shop. What is that saying? 
going to be closed today. I guess today is a holiday. Easter weekend, long weekend. Monday, Tuesday. Today is uh, Monday. And uh, I did a walk on Queen Street yesterday. Uh, different sections of Queen Street. And it was very busy. Uh, Toronto is under lockdown again, but uh, the streets were pretty busy. Everybody was out. What I noticed that some stores had a lineup and some stores were just boarded up closed. So there's either really busy or you're really not busy. You're closed. So there's nothing. Wow, look at this. This guy sells or rents this kind of stuff. Oh man, that's nice alleyway too. I was thinking of doing all these alleyways with a bicycle because they're not that interesting most of the time and it's nice to kind of uh, ride along, ride with your bicycle so you can have a better speed, you know, you can speed right through them. There's a lot of these, uh, it's like an industri very industrial place. Notice this guy had a couple of dogs always on standby too when I was driving by here. Wow. You know, that's a, I guess it's a rental of um, heavy equipment. Not heavy, but slightly heavy. Moderately heavy. Those two houses across the street, those houses are not bad looking for a. Okay. This camera, Fuji X100, great camera, really happy with it. I banged it around a lot. Actually, it just fell in the car because I had it uh, in the, on the seat. And as I was driving, that's not bad here. Let's try this. It's a good shot. There you go. As I was driving, somebody cut across at extremely high speed and I had to hit wow. that sounds gorgeous I had to hit the brakes really hard and the camera went flying a great camera but sometimes it, it, it's not a problem with the camera but it has three modes you can either look at the pictures in the back or in inside and it keeps changing I like to I like to turn off the back monitor completely this guy's got a little street car action happening here. Nice paintings. I like to turn off the screen, back screen completely and rely only with a viewfinder. Um, I don't like taking pictures like this because one thing for sure, you have no, um, nowhere to hold your hands solid. So your hands, there's always movement in it. And it's much easier to stick a camera to your face, hold it tight, and focus on what you're doing. And during daylight, when you want to review the images in the back, it's easier to have the images show up in the inside viewfinder. So you don't have to worry about the sun and glare and all that kind of stuff. And you can do all the stuff looking in there. So I personally always turn off the, um, the back screen. I hardly ever use it. You know, if you take it off, I wouldn't even miss it. Um, really can find out people who take pictures like this. I just can't figure out how, why would they do that? It's so much easier not doing that. That's it. Okay, come on. Oh, no car. That's an interesting, uh, what do you call it, a house? Maybe. Look back shot. We are at a beer store. The big beer store on my left with beers. This garage is interesting too. Some of the pictures I take are purely for, um, I guess, documentary style pictures. I wouldn't consider them uh, I wouldn't consider them any sort of uh, artistic pictures at all but uh, some documenting whatever c comes to mind 
Guys, oh, this is nice. I like all these Jeeps. And this is cool shot. I like this. I like this one. I like this Jeep. It's good. I'm going to actually hold the camera really low. Try a couple of shots like that. That's beautiful. These off-road vehicles are amazing. That Land Rover, the Burgundy one, it's really narrow wheelbase. And then they start making them wider and wider because people were flipping them with these narrow wheelbases. But you need narrow wheelbases to do serious off-roading and trail riding because the trails are not usually that wide. So you need the wheelbase to be narrow so you can get to all sorts of places. But the problem was we built, people were taking these cars, Jeeps with narrow wheelbases, and they were going on a highway fast and trying to do maneuvers and they would flip them over. So the car manufacturers tried to build them wider and wider, but pretty much like a car. So that kind of made them not as effective off-road. So the original SUVs, and not SUVs, Jeeps and Land Rovers, they're skinny, skinny tires and skinny wheelbase ready to go anywhere you could drive them on a little path you know that uh, building across let me check make sure you guys in the camera world can see what I see I yeah, can see it that building across used to be a computer store called CP used when Apple first started making computers let's find a shot in there with a maybe a tip of a car as a reference time guide it used to be uh, selling Apple computers. We're talking when the computer, Apple computers were those funny ones. Um, you know, the, the candy color ones with the green and blue big ones. For, I guess uh, in the 90s, late 90s. That guy used to sell Apple computers and I bought my Apple from there, my, my computer. And they were very friendly and easy to get to. It would sell Photoshop programs back in the day and then they closed up and then then turned into a club a weird nightclub for a while and then uh, kind of ended up closing it's a kind of a factory slash a store slash something and now it's closed I think it's going to be um, being condoed up soon that's a also an interesting restaurant across the place I just photographed right here right here uh, it says since 1955. That's like a front of a bus with a driver. 1955. There's another restaurant here. Sometimes I drive on this street. It's uh, let's see if you can find it. Is it? Is it closed? Maybe a pizzeria. Galleria. Let's go a little bit further. 1955 diner. It's uh, incredible. It's incredible. You know. I thought there was another store. Maybe it's on another street. It's called a Polo Restaurant. No, let's continue. Guess not. So where are we? What street is this? This is Bathurst. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, this is Bathurst, so... looking at some artwork you guys can do one of these who can't do one of these artists are amazing okay so yeah that that place is pretty neat i don't know if that worked or not oh that would have been good uh, okay fast takeout service since now, that girl in the window, it's nice. She's kind of leaning. When I do these photographs, it's nice to have some other element besides the building in it. That woman walking, maybe, the cars. Okay, maybe there, maybe. Okay. I've actually never been to that place, but I've used to, I had a studio around here, and I used to drive downtown on this road a lot in the 90s and say 2000s. And I used to drive by this guy and he was always had people 
eating there late at night, any hours. But I never actually, for some reason, went and had food there. So I don't know what their food's like. I'm sure it's got to be good if you're around since 1950. How many years ago is 1950? Today is 19, no, today is 2021, uh, minus 55. We make it like, like 60, 70 years old. Probably. That was another documentary shot. Keep on going, let's keep going. The new condos here. See, I don't remember what it was here before. The reason I do this walk and taking pictures on the street is that, you know, you, I've driven by this place probably a thousand times, okay? And, you know, and I'm sure it was something here that I looked at or whatever. But, you know, I, I don't know what it was anymore. I, I don't... Once they tear a place down and put a new building up, you kind of forget what it was. And I like doing these pictures because it kind of gives you a glimpse into the past. You know, if you have kind of a historic documentation of the streets. I'm getting a little bit dark on this camera. I'm trying to see if I can lighten this up. I'm shooting everything on manual mode. So let's go to... Yeah, I'll brighten it up a touch. I'm using, shooting everything on manual. Everything on manual. I've seen these videos of these kids uh, all over that they climb those things. They climb it to the thing and they go all the way to the tip. And they're always videotaping themselves doing it. It's kind of incredible. When you look at it, on the video you think wow that's kind of crazy and after watching a few of them you realize that you know it's kind of doable but very risky and uh, you know when you're young your uh, level of risk assessment is completely different you're like man I can do anything I'm never gonna fall and if I fall I'm probably not gonna hurt myself and as you get older you get opposite you go what if I fall and that is, and, uh, uh, that's life. What's interesting is that when you're younger, you probably don't have as much experience. So you're more likely to fall. So as you get older, you get more experience, but you also are more aware. The more experience and knowledge you have, the more you think about things. You know, people who pick up an event and start doing it like they start picking up an instrument or a camera they always think they're great right away they think they're a, they're a superstar at it and people who've been playing it for years and years they think that they're no good i think that's called downy cougar effect or something like that and it's a pretty interesting phenomena and then this used to be a garage at one point i remember for sure uh it used to be a garage like a car repair garage and it's an art store, I guess. You know, where the furniture is graffiti painted. Yeah. Okay. How's the lighting? Checking lighting, checking lighting. Check, check, check. Let's find a shot into that mess over there. For... For purposes of remembering at some point when it's... I remember coming here once for something. It's pretty interesting uh, back there. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. When I was on Queen Street yesterday, there were so many people walking that it was very difficult to stop and take pictures. Every time you stopped, it felt like you were uh, blocking the river, you know? Like we were like a water flowing and you were blocking the river, so... Yeah, you know, I don't want to do that, especially in a uh, COVID-ish, covid times, because I don't want people on top of you, and you don't want to be blocking way for other people. So it's hard to photograph yesterday on Queen Street. I managed to take a couple of decent shots, and that's it. This street is really good for... That, that woman is walking. Let me see if I can get her in the shot. Come on, come on, come on. You're burning film. There you go. There you go. 
that's nice another shot this way very bright yeah I didn't take get too many good shots certainly not many good street shots but I did get um, uh, what do you say I got a few um, I got a lucky shot of a guy against the wall and he was playing with his eyes oh this is a good shot of this car coming in this guy, shot of this guy standing against the wall lit well and playing with his eye I like that shot and it's like this guy is interesting he's got this uh, I take a random shot he's got this pole here in his driveway and he's got um, um, he's hit it so many times that he put these plastic things on it to make sure he doesn't bang into things yes he was standing against wall and I took a kind of a mm, side shot without looking at him I kind of framed the camera and shot it and the framing was really good and the lighting was really overexposed because I guess I was shooting uh, I wasn't paying attention to the exposure compensation so it's really bright which is good so I used that to my advantage it was bright so I processed it really high contrast and colorful it was like a being a street portrait people expect it to be very black and white you know like cliche people always turn it into black and white so I decided to go color with it and I decided to really keep the colors exaggerated so that's what I did with these pictures when I shoot them then I go to process them when I process them then I try to uh, add a story to the processing uh, by color I feel color is an um, expression tool. You use color in photography to tell a story. Um, so that was the reason I used that. Photo worked really well for me. I mean, it was a mistake because it was overexposed, but by making it kind of soft and colorful, it was kind of opposite of what a street portrait would typically be. You know, very black and white and old school. So I like that shot. And then I like a shot of a couple on motorcycle it's okay it's doable and I got a guy sitting at a bus stop which is kind of cliche easy shot but it's okay what else do I have uh, I don't remember anymore so if you don't remember your picture from yesterday they're probably not that good and I got a picture of a house I like a pink house with green doors and stuff that was a kind of a easy architectural shot you know I do like the pictures that have people in them. If there's no people in the shot, uh, it's a little bit kind of like, I love people. I love faces, I love people. If they're not in a the shot, then this guy's walking, those cars, and that corner. Maybe, possibly, yeah. The camera says it's a bit underexposed, which it is. But, you know, sometimes it's better get the shot underexposed than miss it and have no shot. Okay, this is DuPont Station. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I have never, I've actually never um, come to this subway, use this subway at all. It's kind of very strange, but I don't even know what it inside looks like. For some reason, I've never uh, actually used the subway. It's very, very interesting. We are at Spadina. Ooh. So this would be Spadina Road. And it goes all the way to Bloor. Oh, look, there's CN Tower back there. I don't know if you can see it or not on a wide angle lens. CN Tower is very Toronto. Very Toronto action. Maybe a photograph before I get hit with the cars. There you go. Let's go on the other side of the street and keep going. It's funny, my friend, a uh, good friend of mine from Korea sent me a photograph that she took in Korea. Uh, and um, it looked like a CN Tower. You know, there was a picture down there and it looked like CN Tower. And I said, that looks like CN Tower. And uh, she laughed. But it's funny, every city has a tower um, that resembles another tower. You know, for years and years in human life, there was only one big tower. Uh, tower thing and there was the Egypt the pyramids in Egypt were the biggest man-made towery kind of things 
And then the French made one, the Eiffel Tower. Those two, to me, are kind of original. One is made of sand for, you know, 5,000 years ago or something, and nobody knew how they built them. And then the French came in and used metal and engineering. Both those two are kind of like interesting because they're original. I mean, the pyramids, they still don't know how they made them. And, um, but now with modern technology and, uh, uh, what do you call it, engineering, like anybody can make a tower as big as they can, you know. So to me, these big towers are no longer interesting. And another thing, back in the day, not a lot of people could get high off the ground, you know. Uh, not many people flew, so if you go on the top of a tower and had a drink or a dinner, it was a big deal. But now everybody's uh, flying in airplanes. Look at these knives. Got to be Japanese. Is it? Yeah, I don't know, but... Uh, it's got anything to do with knives is Japanese. Japanese know how to make good knives. Swords do. Yeah, now anything that's high and tower, not that interested in. You know, it's not that exciting. Not that exciting, okay. A lonely person with bags walking and a black truck across a... Uh -oh. Some of these pictures may be depressing, <laughs> but um, this is, this is to me, this is like great because we currently are about maybe a couple of miles, maybe two, three miles from the core downtown Toronto, a couple of miles from the core downtown Toronto. And look at the buildings. They're all single story buildings, no shops. They all have potential for great, huge, huge development. And you know what? They will be changing sooner or later. So the way I like to photograph them, I like to preserve some history. So the reason I'm doing these street shots sometimes of buildings that I think are going to be changing is because um, they will be changing very quickly, rapidly. They're not going to be staying like this. The land is way too... Um, expensive we are at uh, pretty soon we're going to be at davenport which is goes straight down to young and bloor mm, if i walk maybe 25 minutes maybe less and young and bloor is center of toronto pretty much and we're 20 minutes walking from center of toronto and you know we have residential buildings on the corner uh two stories here shops and one small apartment on top they're just not going to stay like this. And sooner or later, let this runner go by. Look out. We don't want to break his rhythm. And this is a clothes store. I don't know what it was, but it's a great, great location for a store. And you're right downtown. And uh, see, they're building something up there. And slowly, slowly, they're going to move in. And these beautiful houses are going to be gone. And, you know, this guy's got tooth on his wall. He must really like teeth, this guy. Oh, he's a dentist. Makes sense. Makes sense. Dentist must like teeth. I mean, look at that. That's like, feels like forest. Feels like a forest over there. This is like empty land driveway alleyway these alleyways are really good alleyways are really good da -da -da. okay that look at that thing that white building is just what do you think 70s 60s what's the style i wish we had an architect telling us building you know let's go for this let's go in the middle of the road and then this is i like this um towers here look these things with cables everywhere this is a crazy, that's so Toronto, that screams Toronto. Screams Toronto, oh look at this one. That's a cushion. And then uh, people are looking at me. This is not an area people come and take a lot of street photos. What the hell is this guy doing? Taking pictures of random buildings.
Wow, a lot of these places are closed. It makes uh, shoe repair. I had my shoes fixed there once. Uh, I used to buy gloves. Back in 2000s, I decided to wear gloves uh, so that when I was traveling, I would keep my hands clean. I like photos that are horizontal better for the video. The vertical pictures kind of uh, don't work as good. Yeah, 2000s, I used to buy gloves from that uh, shoe store, Nick's Shoe Repair. And, you know, the leather fingerless gloves, I figured, you know, I'm going to keep my hands clean on a plane, being a germaphobe, some people said, I don't think I was. So I used to wear these gloves to go on a plane, so, you know, I'll keep my hands clean. Really quickly, like really quickly, I realized that the gloves will get dirty and it's hard to clean the gloves. I had to put alcohol on the gloves and leather would get wet and it smell. Quickly I realized that gloves are not a good thing for uh, keeping your hands clean. And I quit. I quit uh, wearing gloves. I'm going to walk down a little bit and end the video right. I want to check out those small shops. So right away I um, quit wearing gloves uh, for germs and dirts and viruses and I started carrying a little alcohol with me to clean my hands on the plane instead of wearing the gloves. The gloves looked really cool, leather gloves looked cool with short sleeves and I was doing photography and traveling in the airport and you know you had this um, uh, leather gloves on and you, you always look cool but you know they weren't um, they weren't helping you with keeping your hands clean and germ-free and this was like back in 2000 so I remember I used to buy a bunch of them from him because I put so much alcohol on them they would just get disintegrated so then I started quit wearing gloves and just cleaning my hands that's a very interesting corner too I like this shot if I get get that guy running with this thing is he still running okay we're at the corner, where are we? DuPont and Davenport in Toronto. I'm gonna call off this ride here. Thanks for walking with me and listening to my stories. We will post these pictures in and we'll catch you in the next uh, video. Thank you and bye back. Out.